how this all started is a really interesting story. How, how did we get here? I mean, this story that happened, this primal story, is still going on. It's still being played out again and again. And it's in Surah Al-Araf here. The story is a story about two creatures, Adam and Iblis. The dominant opinion is that he was a jinn, but he was allowed into the court of the angels, this angelic court. Now these angels were told by God to bow down to Adam. And that sujood is not a prostration. It's not actually putting your head on the ground. It was a type of ta'zim, which was more like an inhina. It was bowing. So Iblis is told to bow down. All of them did it, except Iblis. What has hindered you from not falling prostrate? إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ Because I told you to do this. قَرَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ I'm better than him. Which is a very interesting statement. Because some of the ulama say this is the first wrong action ever. And it's a belief of superiority. It's a belief of superiority of another creature. So he said, I'm better than him. And then, خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارِ Then he gives the reason, this is his logic of why he is superior. You created me from fire, وَخَلَقْتُهُ مِنْ طِينَ And you created him from earth and water. I'm fire and air, he's earth and water. I'm better than him. What was the superiority here? What superiority did he see? Material, right? It's, it's medda. He's looking at the actual substance of what we are made of. Now, what is unique about Iblis and Adam? Both Iblis and Adam, they have this conscious ruah. They have this conscious knowledge of God that other creatures don't have, whether they're made of fire, earth, water, whatever they're made of. So Iblis was looking at the outward of the situation and he's saying, I'm better than him. Why are you making me bow down to somebody that I'm better than? This is his logic. And there's a lot of people that fall into that type of reasoning in the world. And it causes immense problems in the world. Then go down. Now this is a command to him. It is not for thee to show pride here. In other words, you're in the divine presence. This isn't the place for pride. If you're aware of God, you can't be in a state of pride. And therefore, he was cast out of this presence because the two can't go together. And then he says, فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ Get out of here because you are the saghir. You're not better, you're worse. You're the humiliated one because of your pride. Because of your pride, you've put yourself under the thing that you thought you were over. So the actual thinking that you were over this other creature has put you under that creature by default. So go out. His kufr is called kufr al-isyan. It's the disbelief of disobedience. And then he says, قَالَ أَنظُرْنِي أَنظُرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Give me some reprieve. قَالَ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنظَرِينَ You've got this reprieve. قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي This is really key here. بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Now, because you led me astray. Right, So he's blaming, now he blames Allah. This is the beauty of Iblis. Look at this foolish intellect. First, he says, why didn't you do it? And he says, because I can't do that, I'm better than him. Then he says, you made me go astray by telling me to do it in the first place. Because I couldn't do it, you said do it. And, and so it's your fault. It's not my fault, it's your fault. See, that's, he's blaming God for his problems. I will now lurk in ambush for them. 
in other words, these humans. Because you told me to do this thing. So it's both of your faults. You told me to do something that I couldn't do. And the reason I couldn't do it is because he wasn't worthy of it. So he's got two, he, he's got two adversaries here. He's angry at God and he's angry at Adam. And then he says, And I will come upon them from before them. وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ and behind them وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ and to their rights وَعَنْ شَمَائِرِهِمْ and to their left لَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ and you will not find most of them uh, filled with gratitude so this is this is important too because what Iblis has set out to do now is show that they're ingrates that's what he wants to do he wants to show God that you made a mistake you shouldn't have made him the Khalifa the Caliph on earth and you're going to see that they're, they're not going to be grateful for what you've given them in the first place. And so it's very interesting, this story, because what it's telling us is that if you place God in His right position and you place yourself in your right position, which is that you see God over you and you're under, in prostration, in this state of submission, shaitan has no access. When does shaitan flee according to the hadith? When you're in sajda. He, because he can't bear that. Humility before God. And then Allah again, qala khruj minha, madhuman madhura. He banished them again, degraded, banished. And then he says that whoever follows you, لَمَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنْهُمْ لَأَمْلَأَنَّ جَهَنَّمَ مِنْكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ I'm going to fill jahannam with them. Those people that follow you, the, you're their Imam and you're headed to that place so he, you're going to take them with you. So if you take him as an Imam, that's where he's taking you. So Allah gave him the ability to go into our bodies and play with our minds to be able to so inconspicuously sound in our mind as if it is our own deep thoughts but it is actually shaitan saying his worst and evil, evil words into our mind, whispering into our ears. And then shaitan said,